Hey, who were ya? Hey, who were ya? Hello everyone, my name is Chief Lanless and it's time to gobble. Get off my land! I have for you guys a ton of Halo 4 information, so without further ado, let's just get straight on into it. Starting with the brand new enemies we will also be facing alongside the Covenant. Now after the single player trailer from E3, we have now confirmed the other race we will also be fighting against, and we'll be fighting against the Prometheans. So far there are three types that have been confirmed, we have Promethean Knights, Watchers, and Crawlers. The Knights are the, to simplify it, air quote, the Promethean equivalent to the Covenant's Elite. They have a sword, they have the ability to teleport back and forth at certain distances. And they can also spawn the Promethean Watcher, which has the ability to heal and toss back grenades and possibly provide a sh shield which may or may not be an armor ability in the campaign, but we do not know if the Prometheans can use that as an armor ability, air quote. And the Promethean Crawlers are essentially like the grunts. They can shoot and they can attack you in swarms. Now this wouldn't be Halo if it weren't for the staple four vehicles to be returning. We have the Warthog, we have the Mongoose. The Warthog was confirmed a long time ago. The Ghost is coming back as usual and the Banshee as well and a special vehicle as well. But first, let's take a look at the HUD here. As you can see, the vehicle ability has now been moved to the top left corner of the HUD instead of down below by the minimap. And the special vehicle coming back is what believed to be the successor to the Elephant from Halo 3 on the map Sand Trap. I know a lot of people had a lot of fun flipping around in this thing and doing tricks and all these glitches so that's gonna be fun to play with now here's something that has just been confirmed the ordinance drop which was a rumor from a while back now has been confirmed which essentially means that weapons will no longer be laying along the map but they'll fall from the sky in an ordinance drop and you'll pick them up and they'll be they'll be at different locations and at different set times so you can, no more weapon horn for you guys on certain maps so I kind of like this idea let me guys know what you guys think down below in the comments below and now let's move on now with another installment of Halo comes more and more ideas and possibilities to customize your armor set for your multiplayer and Spartan Ops experience. Let's move on to pre-order bonuses. Now there's tons of information about weapon armor and weapon skins when you pre-order your copy of Halo 4 from certain locations. When you pre-order from Best Buy, you'll get the Raptor armor skin and the armor suit Venator. When you pre-order for GameStop, you get the Forced armor skin and the armor Hazop. Also, in GameStop Canada, you will get the Arctic Weapon skin for the Battle Rifle. From Play.com, you will get Deadeye Helmet skin. From Amazon, you will get the Web Armor skin and the Armor Suit CIO. Also, from Microsoft Store, you will get the Pulse Armor skin and the Gunganer Armor Suit. Also, from Walmart, you will get the Circuit Armor skin and the Armor Suit Oceanic. Right now, these skins are just like patterns. You can actually swap any colors in and out. But as for the armor, nobody's actually sure if that's actually exclusive to where you pre-order it from, or you'll get it earlier than everybody else, and everybody else will have to unlock that particular suit of armor. I'm hoping for the latter, so that way I can own all sets of armor eventually when I do level up in the game. Now onto the big thing that a lot of people are looking forward to for Halo 4 multiplayer, and this is loadout customization. Looks like right now you can have up to five loadouts that you can customize. You can customize the primary weapon, your secondary weapon, which grenade you like, either Semtex or Frag. Other grenades have yet to be confirmed. You can customize your armor ability and new things, which are support upgrades and tactical packages, which I'll address those two eventually. Now let's get on to weapons. Onto the tools of the trade. Yes, the weapons, both old and new. As you'll see and hear for yourselves, there's a brand new from scratch sound library for Halo 4. So all the weapons, of course, not only do they look better, they sound amazing. So I'll splice in some gameplay in between. We have the assault rifle coming back. We have the battle rifle coming back. We also have the DMR coming back, the Magnum, we have the rocket launcher, the sniper, and the Spartan laser. Essentially the staples that we know and love from previous Halos. And we have a brand new one as well. We have the railgun, which is rumored to shoot like the Goss Warthog, of course, in a smaller size because it is a handheld weapon, which would be kind of cool here. Also, we have the Sticky Detonator, which is a brand new pistol, which basically launches a magnetically latched explosives like a sticky grenade onto the ground but it's a human grenade and they can be remotely detonated and also when you shoot it a little screen pops on the side and as you can see there you can track your enemy when it walks on top of it to 
detonate it precisely on time to blow up your enemy. So that's going to be really cool. On to the alien weapons. The plasma pistol is returning, of course. The needler. The energy sword. We also have the covenant carbine coming back as well. All receiving visual and audio upgrades. We have a brand new weapon that's coming back replacing the plasma rifle. We now have the storm rifle. So no longer is it an SMG size. It is actually a full rifle size weapon. Also, from the Forerunner side, we have a scatter shot here, so that's going to be really cool. I'll show you some gameplay of the alien weapons now. Here we have the Covenant Carbine in action, shooting a few crawlers and Spartan Ops. Here's the Storm Rifle, sounding menacing than ever. Here's somebody here with the Storm Rifle and the Covenant Carbine, swapping them out here and getting a scatter shot from an ordinance drop. Here, as you can see, the scatter shot sounds kind of funny, but it's kind of cool when you land all your shells onto the target when you you have to get an accurate enough shot, they'll disintegrate like they did on that railing. As you can see, here it is when you pick it up in the single player. Looks absolutely amazing. I was blown away just how all the pieces magically lifted off the ground and in together. I thought that was really cool. Here's the light rifle. Only seen in single player so far, but I wouldn't be surprised if this showed up in multiplayer. It looks cool. It looks like basically it's the Forerunner equivalent to the DMR. It's really cool. The scope, everything is amazing. And of course, as a forerunner gun, it tends to make things disintegrate, which is a really cool effect. And here's a little tidbit here. Once again, you are able to rip off turrets from their mount. Here's the human turret, and here's also the plasma turret as well. It's time to talk armor abilities. This time around in Halo 4, Sprint will be a standard, which I really enjoy, because back in Halo Reach, that's all I really used, and therefore, I didn't use too many other of the armor abilities. So now I get to try basically them both, since Sprint is now a standard. Here we have a brand new armor ability called Thruster Pack. It is not actually replacing Jet Pack this time around. They're both going to exist. Thruster Pack allows for horizontal movement, so it would probably be deadly with a shotgun or sword in hand. Here's the returning hologram armor ability. It looks harder to tell the difference. They must have upgraded it. Here we have the Thruster Pack being used in the foreground and the Jet Pack in the back, confirming that Jet Pack is returning. Here's brand new armor abilities, Promethean Vision and Hard Light Shield. Promethean vis Vision is described as a sonar-like infrared vision to, to see the enemies on the map. Here's some gameplay from different trailers, as well as the single-player trailer. I don't think it's going to be in-depth as a single-player one. This is probably thanks to Master Chief's advance in technology, and probably his own technology as well. Here's a little screenshot of the Hard Light Shield, which is be really cool to use. And you can definitely actually move around with it and definitely shield and block things, which is really cool to use. And here's some gameplay of it. Here we have a brand new feature to Halo customization. We have support upgrades, which allows you to further tweak your Spartan to further match your playstyle. Here we have the ammo upgrade, which you can opt in for to get a little bit more ammo to your loadout. Or you can go for the sensor upgrade to upgrade your motion sensor. Or you can pick an awareness upgrade, which is great for snipers, which allows you to view your motion sensor while aiming down a scoped weapon. Now on to the other brand new thing introduced into customization, we have tactical packages. Now as of right now, there are only two confirmed on Halo 4's website, but I'm assuming there will be more. You can, actually, you can opt for a shield package, which will allow your shields to regenerate much faster, or you can go for the firepower package, which allows you to have two primary weapons instead of a primary and secondary, but you sacrifice speed and mobility, so it's a kind of give or take, which is kind of interesting. They may or may not have more. I'm leaning towards it will probably have more than just these two tactical packages. As of right now, Halo 4 has only confirmed three different multiplayer game types. Of course, the traditional Slayer is set to return utilizing this new Ordinance Drop feature that I mentioned earlier, aiming to make weapon whoring a thing of the past. The second game type to be confirmed is Infinity Slayer, a brand new one, which is currently a free-for-all game type, but don't be surprised if they make a team variant later on. Essentially, this is utilizing the brand new Ordinance Drop feature. Once you reach a certain amount of kills, you're given the ability to call in an Ordinance Drop to drop on in, and you can select up to three randomly generated generated weapons or power-ups which can alter your speed, shielding, or the ability to inflict more damage. And here's some footage of it right now. Confirmed. 
And here's the third confirmed game type for Halo Forwards Multiplayer. It is called Regicide, another free-for-all game type. If you're in first place, you're labeled as the king and all other players have a motion sensor and are able to track you basically 24-7. To be the king, you have to be in first place, and the more kills you get, the higher the bounty you get on your head. Also, when your bounty increases, the more points that other players will receive by killing you. So this is kind of, kind of cool and definitely very crazy game type. Alrighty guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it somewhat informative. I'll leave you guys with some gameplay of the upgraded assassinations for Halo 4's multiplayer. They look absolutely sick this time around. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, and remember all likes and favorites are greatly appreciated. And don't forget to come on by and check out my channel. Link will be down below in the description. My name is Chief Lanless and I'm signing out. Geronimo!